tournament. This is the second chance finals. The winner of this match will play Frank Frigo tomorrow at 1500 for the world championship. So each of these players is two matches away from being the new world champion. We have uh, a really exciting match. One of the players, uh, Kengo from Japan, entered the uh, a qualifier in Japan where a couple of people put up $5,000 to pay expenses to come to Monte Carlo for whoever wins that event. I believe they had uh, 120, uh, uh, 128 players, and Kengo won. He paid seven euro to enter the tournament, won the tournament, and that's why he's here. This is his first big event, and here he is, guaranteed third place, which is already an amazing feat. The other player, Mario Kuhl from Germany, lives out in Potsdam, not far from where Tobias lives in Berlin. So I'm going to let Tobias tell you about him. There's some very interesting stories about him. Uh, he's a very experienced player. He is uh, usually playing money games. Um, his first appearance in tournaments were uh, in 1998. He played the final of the Nordic Open. Uh, he lost to Martin Uhl, who is uh, uh, the wife of Paul McGrill, who, who was a wife of Paul McGrill. And um, uh, or what else, uh, what else well, to say? Well, you said he, Paul was doing the it, commentary, right? Right. It was very funny. But uh, first, I, I give you a little bit more of uh, um, uh, Mario's history. Uh, he was uh, founder of True Money Games, uh, or... Uh, online playing site very successful uh, beginning of 2000 yeah and i played uh, on that i lost a lot of money on that site <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe to me <laughs> i think so weren't you living in chicago then that's how you and i became best friends uh that was a little bit later little that later? was in uh, 2011 oh yeah. okay that was uh, when True Money Games wa was already uh, out of business. Oh, that's right. That's where you were taking my money live in the Chicago <laughs> Chouette. Not really, not really. Yeah, right. <laughs> we never we never did bets. Uh, um, I, I was very careful uh -huh. that, no that nobody loses too much. Yeah, right. Especially me. <laughs> <laughs> so Mario is um, a very... He's been very impressive in this tournament. As you may know, he won the high roller event, which is a pretty, and he beat Victor, and he beat some great players. And that was a high roller event. Is It was 7,500 euro entry fee. You can imagine the quality of the players that enter that event. To win that is almost as hard a feat as to win the world champion. No, I'm going a little too far. It was hard, though. It was really tough. Now, the world championship is 200 players. We're down to these last and three. And we are in the match. Yes. We are in the match. It's a 13-point match. Yeah. And Mario is on top playing the white checkers. Can go on the bottom playing the black checkers. 13-point match. They're playing legal moves. Yeah. All the stream matches are legal moves. And we have the XG feed. So I've got XG and Tobias. I don't need to say much. And I won't. <laughs> I'm going I'm to leave it to you guys. All right, Mario goes off to a strong advantage with the bar point and the hit. And now the advantage is pretty much even. <laughs> yeah. It was a That's great a good thing. This is what always, uh, Paul McGrill always uh, used to have these things. Uh, each role, he figured out equity up or equity down. Yeah. And uh, who is on what level? Very particular thing, uh, especially for uh, beginners and intermediates, is um, they miss the cube because they are too busy with the game. Yeah, so it always helps this little practice: uh, equity up, equity down. This is a huge equity up, yes. huge equity yes. up. He makes a five prime and he hits a checker in the outfield, plus freeing his last checker. Yeah, so uh, this is like. Uh, as the old, um, the, uh, the, the old uh, uh, um, artificial intelligence uh, Snowy would call it, uh, cube hot position. Yeah, there was always a sign cube hot position. Uh -huh. yeah. this, so this is this cube is hot position. Yeah, I, I don't know how anybody could take this cube. Could you be too good? Well, you have to fill in these points. You have to fill in these points. This is not automatically, but... It's um, 0.006, right on the edge of too good. And part of the reason it might be too good is you don't have a bad shake here. There's nothing that's going to get you into trouble. So you may as well roll and see what happens. Uh, the point is uh, that Black sees nothing of the outfield. 
Yeah. So you roll and see if you get lucky. And if Let you don't get lucky, then you can double them out later. Yes. And he doesn't leave the shot. Why take a chance when you got the game one? This is a good point. This is good pointing out of a concept. Uh, you're not uh, winning uh, a ton of uh, uh, of gamins here, but it's too good because you could uh, always use the cube to win the game. So there's no rush right now. So when you th you're sure your opponent's passing, you ask yourself if you're too good. And one of the main things you think about are market gainers. Are there many situations where your opponent can gain uh, a take? And there's really not here. You can't go, you can't get you can't get hurt by playing on. It's still real close. It wouldn't be a problem to cash. I can't think of too many really bad. Yeah, roles well, there. first of all, not much changed in this position. Yeah. 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 So uh, equity up or equity down, it pretty much is the same. Yeah. But Mario's taking the other thing that you think about is winning an undoubled gamut at this score is not worth a lot. Winning one or two points at zero zero is not worth a whole lot. So I don't mind this cash at all. And the fact that it said it was too good, it was real close. So not a bad, not a bad cube. And obviously a quick drop. That's exactly how I play my 3-1 openings. <laughs> you always split here, especially when the 8-point is stripped. Now if your opponent rolls a 4-2 or a 6-1, what's he going to do? So you always split after that play. After he makes the 5-point or the 4-point. And sometimes a three-point. This is very aggressive. So uh, usually you like to attack uh, next to your uh, priming point Ooh. or the one after. Yeah, the hit really paid off. So um, first you make the four-point, then you think. All right, and the roll before, even though he danced, uh, it was not a cue pot position because he had no extra man in the zone. Yeah, Ooh, it was big, big just roll. not enough to. Uh, and this is what we call it. Blitz. This is what we call a cube saver, hitting and making a point, making the five point. Well, uh, not not only a cube saver. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Might be a game saver. <laughs> it's more like fifty-fifty in the sequence now. Yeah. This, yeah. Uh, uh, a hit point and dance, I mean, uh, that's a monster sequence. And dance again. 6-5 would have been a great roll if he would be in, but um, on the bar it's... Wow. Mario was in trouble three rolls ago, and now he's in a much more commanding position. But he's still got a lot of work to do. So uh, if Kango achieves to anchor, which is a, a three to one favorite, uh, there's probably no cube action. Uh huh. And now he didn't anchor, and I think there is cube action. So let's see. It's a they are like yep, solid double, solid take. Yeah, there there are nine rolls uh, who make the bar point. Uh, plus there's also like uh, a double five and double four, which is really strong. And uh, even if uh, Mario uh, has has no joker or, or no great number, he will still stay favorite. Yeah. If I rolled a six three, I wouldn't make the bar point. I would point on the two point. So some of those rolls are duplicated, but still there's a lot of good rolls, and that's why you must double. Up 25 pips in the race is another factor. You use Pratt, position, race, and threats. He's got them all. This is an easy take according to XG, but not easy according to human beings who are in the world championship for the first time in their life and playing for well, the most money they've ever played for. A good take. Let's talk Very about, nice. Yes, let's talk about the thought uh, uh, process. Uh, I mean, he has... Uh, that was a great role for Mario. He has a very good counter position, and um, uh huh. You got to bring the five down. You don't want to bury checkers. You got no hope exactly, if you do that. Exactly, exactly. Got to take the risk. And getting hit wouldn't be horrible. You might be able to make a back game. Okay. It would be not a very well timed back game, but that's you got to take what what you're given. You'd really like to roll a three-two and make the. 
three points. Yeah, or double three. Yeah. Even if he had the one-two back game, an untimed one-two back game is pretty, pretty hopeless. Any untimed back game is pretty hopeless. So this has gone very, very well for Mario so, so far. Little. 13 to 9 looks like a good move. Why aren't he you just make making the three points? All right, oh, he could make hit. the six prime. He could make, make the, the six prime. It has to be. Oh, he doesn't want him to get the second checkpoint. I would be making the three point very quickly. Wow. He doesn't want him to have the, I don't, I, I, the three point is correct. The hitting idea is for Morgan. See, this to me is, is a natural play. I'm not so concerned if he makes the second anchor because he just doesn't have timing. Exactly. He has no timing, yeah. This is not the right idea. Okay. Not the right idea, but still a very strong position. Well, there's that second anchor that he was trying to prevent, and mm, again, yeah. he made it, and who cares? I'd be happy to, to see my opponent have the 1 2 game here. I agree with you. He needs uh, he needs a three point. I think if I rolled a two, I would even move from the twenty four to the twenty two. Uh, yeah, such a bad time game. It depends a little bit how the position looks like uh, when you roll it. Uh huh. He's bringing them in to kill sixes, so he doesn't have to play his sixes anymore. That's a good move, smart. good concept, right? He wants to hold his board as long as possible, which is not going to be very long. <laughs> Only a 1-6 or 2-6 hits, and it's not the end of the world if he gets hit. And he likes to have that checker six away from the three-point. <laughs> so he could also bring the builders without leaving a shot like that, yeah? So here would be uh, no hitting numbers, but actually even if he gets hit, yeah, even if he gets hit, uh, it wouldn't change anything. And this is also right. Um, this is the best play. This is the best play, yeah. That's how not afraid you are of getting hit. The hit uh, helps the timing, yeah. The hit helps uh, White's timing, and the next point White's want to make is a three-point. <coughs> It's thematic to slot the front or the back of the prime, depending on the situation. This is fine. Not a bad play. There's hardly a bad play there. Everything. Okay. Now he can't come up with the two as, as comfortably. He can get blitzed too much. The last roll he might have been able to, but now there's too many builders. So one checker has got to go to the four point, I would think. So, that's very nice structure. Very nice. I mean, uh, the story repeats. This play is a forced play. And certainly not a bad roll. Clear from the rear. Five to four seems awfully natural to me. Yes. Yeah, sometimes you see like play uh, players uh, play two to one. Uh, this is usually never a good move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> right, this is a way to maintain your prime. Nice as long as possible. Uh -huh. nice uh, your infield board, your... Uh, 
Having a four-point board is actually pretty good for Kengo at this point compared to where he was. Now, you're not supposed to try and make him crash. You got a good roll like this, you bring him in. He has, like, perfect distribution, and sooner or later he will have a chance to point on him anyhow. Yeah. They're using the Tempest Clock, which you can get on Backgammon Galaxy Shop. It's really kind of cool. You use your iPhone. I might come out with three. Forget about the game and try and get off gammons. Um, I know I do. I come out with three. You can't. Uh, you have to leave the next time anyhow. Yeah, and maybe then you can't leave and have to destroy your board. So you should leave now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, if you're if, so, if you're uh, Kengo, you're not thinking about winning. You're thinking about getting he, off the gammon. There you go. It looks like he understands the game very well and the concept. Oh yeah, he's yeah. a very fine player. Nice roll, filling in the board. Decreases the chances for shots later. This is technical stuff. Yeah. There's usually, uh, this is in the milli percentage. Mm -hmm. That double five really helped Kengo reduce his gammons by quite a bit. He's still under threat though. Especially if you roll double ones. He doesn't want to roll that next time. 6-4, 5-4, and high doubles all leave shots, so it's smart to cover. You could get a shot right now. Right, but uh, high doubles is actually uh, not a bad roll for him. 4-3, smooth. But then now with it, when you see this configuration, you can see if there's, there's a bad lots roll, of double yeah. shots. There's lots of double shots potential in the next roll, especially if there's a 4 yeah. It has to be a four with four <laughs> double shots, four three or four five or four oh, six. Oh, there it is. This is one. There yeah. it is. Yeah. Okay, twenty numbers hit, and he misses. Oh, that's a very big miss. That's huge. I think you got to come out. Got to run. Not so sure about. I think probably White has more bad numbers if you stay back, and there's also no wastage. Yeah. You're wasting one pip. I guess so, but. The uh, the real question is when do you have to leave for the uh, BG? And I think there was no uh, there's still enough time to escape the BG. And that's now. He needs a two to keep from leaving a shot or doubles. Okay, you're gonna hit, aren't you? Yep. Because he might come in behind you and you don't have repeaters when you hit. Yes, also the ace is duplicating, but it's not right in all positions. This is not a standard move. I this see. is uh, um, There are positions where it's right and this, uh, where you uh, put the check as three to two. A very, very strong start for Mario in this match. Very big. This is so I basically now there's four crossovers and he doesn't have enough rolls to save the gammon. So now uh, this is uh, a gin. Yeah. It's gin. It's, uh, it's uh, a uh, uh, unless the sequence two one two one. Yeah. yeah. This is the only so sequence. It's, it's over. Every uh, every other Five roll nothing. and two one. Big game for Mario. Very big game for Mario. And Kenji, and Ken, I said Kengo, made the right play by taking. Just because it didn't work doesn't mean it was wrong. It was a good take. But if he had to do over, look at the PRs, one five five and two two three. You yeah. don't see matches any better than this. These guys are playing at a tremendous level and in tremendous pressure. My hat's off to both of them. You fight for your four point and five point by hitting in the early game. It's out. It's automatic. Yeah, like uh, the game concept at the beginning is fighting for the good points. That's what both people are doing, yeah? Mm -hmm. The bar point is a good point. The four point is a good point. Yeah. And uh, when you hold the point, your opponent can't make it. This is another asset of mm -hmm. having a point. Yeah. Mm. 
Ooh, oh, what is, a monster. That is a monster. <laughs> what a monster. Hits two, makes the five. <laughs> yeah. You're going to hit the second checker. What's he looking at? Well, he can make a uh, hit with two points, yeah, which is usually right. Yeah. Wow. Or he could uh, uh, hit in the outfield I didn't the second it time. It's, it's wrong to hit in the outfield. I would have. Uh, wow. Yeah, this is. It's very close by. It's very wow. close by. Uh, naturally, a second point is more valuable than when another checker. And, wow, uh, he's making the right play. That was the right play. I hit two instinctively. Wow. Yeah. It is fairly close. 0 0.023. He can't go wrong with either play. But he sure is happy about the roll. So it features, uh, this move features different concepts. Yeah. When you, um, when you want to blitz, it's very often good to keep an anchor. The anchor protects you in case your blitz fails. Yeah. Uh huh. So, um, and also, uh, additional points are good for the blitz. Yeah. Are we looking at cube action? Maybe with this score, you don't double too quickly. I, I would roll here so also. How would it be the other way? Would he be closer on the double with 2 1 if he uh, had the three point and still holding the 20 point? I don't know. I, I don't know. Good question, though. Please don't ask questions that I can't answer. <laughs> okay. I mean, keep it simple. <laughs> well, uh, very often uh, the right questions leads to a better play. So uh, sometimes uh, you understand the play better if you ask the right questions. Uh -huh. This play is not the right idea, but it's not terrible. Um, my first instinct would have been actually uh, uh, the two point. Yeah, you yeah. don't stack and not leave a shot. Uh, but on the other hand, you can't be stuck on the 23 and 24. So uh, it's very important to step up with the five. Yeah. Okay. But uh, also another positional aspect is you like to have the additional uh, checker on the mid uh, on the midpoint because uh, something is happening in your outfield. So this is why you better slot uh, your two. Yeah. You're Good way up action. in the race. Yeah. You're way up in the race, so race. Mm -hmm. No need to make interboard points. You can't hit. Can go with love a six here. He didn't get it. Well, he actually would have loved to have a, a fourth man back uh, to ha to keep the ace and make the uh, bar point of the opponent. Yeah. This is a tough position again. They're both playing under two PR. I think it's now uh, it must be like the uh, the two point because uh, hitting is involved and uh, you want to be prepared. Right. Yeah. You right. want uh, your hits to be effective. And effectiveness means uh, board strength. So you uh, more than doubled your dancers, uh, your opponent's dancing numbers by making a third point. Uh -huh. And again, Mario's game plan is racing, so he's not going to take chances by leaving shots. Oh, well, uh, he won't leave a shot against a stronger board when yeah. he's uh, up that much and controlling everything, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is a good roll for Kengo. It helps him win, but it also really slows down the gammons. Oh, do you make the ace? Yeah, I hate to make the uh, ace, but... I clear the 13 because the 13 ah. is not necessary anymore. And you're right, yeah, making yeah. the ace would be You're controlling wrong. from the bar point and uh, uh -huh. you need now the builders and uh, you also don't want to waste the pips. It's a pretty good uh, axiom, by the way, when you're holding the 18 point, you don't need the midpoint most of the time. And the same applies, by the way, for the five and the four point. Ah. Yeah. Notice he's not coming out here because that's his, his hope is to get a shot. Uh, well, at a certain point, also not coming out means additional gammon losses. So this is a consideration. And I'm very happy he's taking his time because uh, sixes are not growing on trees, you know. And... Um, 
Uh, look at this, you know, if he's not coming out, maybe he doesn't get the six. Mario brings in Bilder, and um, it's very convenient to clear his position while he's pointing on his opponent. Yeah. So, so um, coming out is right here. It is right, yeah. And the five is a technical thing, and... Uh, well, nine three eight three. if I'm reading it right, is a tie with coming out. Ex uh, no, uh, no, coming out is like a must. No, nine ah, three eight uh, three is a tie. Yeah, yeah, it's but the this same is, equity. Uh, sorry, this is a different analysis. Yeah, they haven't used yeah, plus yeah. plus on yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, probably there uh, was a huge difference, and now uh, uh, it's just because uh, adjusting the numbers. Yeah. All right, he's coming out. He made the right play. Not a lot of game-winning chances when you do that, but you sure are not going to get gammoned anywhere near as much. Can't get blitzed or pointed on. It looks like clearing the uh, nine point. Oh, you volunteer because of the blots? And, Fantastic. And nothing is close. This is this is a classic. I'm willing to bet you that most humans would clear the nine point without much thought. Uh, yeah, well, um, it's going to get much worse if you don't do it now, though. Of course, most humans uh, are not good backgammon players. <laughs> <laughs> I would say all humans are not good backgammon yeah, players. Yeah, so let's. Uh, compare to Max G. Wow! Uh, the, Look at this uh, play. All right. Let's see if Mario catches this play. Are we making bets? Call up, call up Morton Holm or go um, to the website. Make a bet this on this is, play. So, uh, first of all, oh my uh, gosh. He got it. Look at that. What covers? Only 6-2 is great. 6-4 and 6-1. 6-3. I see lots of co hit and cover numbers. They don't cover both, though. Wonderful play. Absolutely masterful play. <laughs> now do you hit? I don't think you do. Uh, well, if you if you don't hit, uh, how do you want to win the game? But if you hit, you lose a, a, you lose a ton a of gammons. Yeah. I don't. I'm not sure what you do. Would you hit or not? This is a cool. Uh, I would. Uh, Hitting is wrong. Well, we don't see it though. It's not on the list. It's not in the top eight plays. You got to scroll down to see the hit. There he goes. Wow, you got to scroll down that much. Hitting's got to be wrong. My initial instinct was I don't hit here. Look how far he's scrolling down. There it is. Oh, it's not. It's a. Oh, it's a blunder. But let's plus plus it. Okay, he didn't hit. That was clearly right. This should be a simple two-point win for Mario. But going up seven nothing in a match to thirteen. That's um, not fun if you're from Japan. There are no shot leaving numbers here. That's a good number to clear the back. See, the point is if you're not hitting, you're just giving up the game. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you do have to give up. That was one of them. This is true, but uh, as we saw, hitting is also like 28% winning chances. The board was a little worse you hit. Or his board a little better. Of course, oh, that the race is not completely yeah. dead, by the way. That's right. It's only Especially six after double, six <laughs> double six four. Yeah. It's another reason not to hit. You're, yeah. you're not yeah. out of the race. Yeah. Every game is a race. The pip count's always important. If you haven't learned how to count pips, it, and you, you can't be a really good backgammon player. Unless oh, you this, would, this would have been a game changer. Yeah, double that six. would have been a game changer for Kengo. Can you do it again? Wow! <laughs> wow, a double four. Yes. <laughs> remember that I is said, a game changer too. Remember I said this is just going to be a two-point game for, for Mario and boom. All of a sudden we got a match. Okay, unstack the six. Yeah, that was a bad roll. Yep. Well, the average roll is eight. He rolled six. That's not terrible. It's not great. Pips are pips, our friend Jake Jacobs likes to say. Sure miss Jake. I wish he was here. And it's an exact even position, but with a big advantage because uh, Kango is on roll. Six one, another average roll. 
See, when you're ahead, you slot the ace. So when you're behind, the same, you it's, uh, it's still the same pip count. Uh huh. Now, the, now I go to the ace. I would think you go to the ace, maybe five to five to four. Oh, oh. that's it. That's big. <laughs> unless he unless he counters. He can also roll a double. You are an optimist. Mm. You are an optimist, Toby. Yeah. But he can't uh, Mario can't double him out, so that's not over. Yeah. He has more time to roll a double. You're right, this is not over. One big double and he's back in the game. Good roll. Good roll. It's not uh, very going to be very easy now. Five checkers left. Still alive. You roll Still two alive. You got to roll two aces. And now it's gin. Yeah. So, one thing that I find interesting, you spent a lot of time during your lifetime with Paul McGrill, traveling the world with him. How many years were you doing that? Um... Oh, well, uh, we we were not constantly together, but uh, I mean, uh, when we saw the tournament, uh, often we went to another tournament. Uh, uh, we we stayed there for a while uh, in Vienna, uh, not at the same place, but uh, we've seen frequently. And uh, this was maybe a period of about uh, two years. And uh, would you say he's as great a genius as everybody says he was? Uh, absolutely 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 okay. absolutely i mean uh, he was a bless to the game and he was a a bless for everybody who, who got lucky to meet him yeah i certainly enjoyed working with him he, be yeah. he became one of our teachers at the back end learning center his last couple of years and i really loved working with him he was working on a new book that would have been very exciting uh, he was working on five new books. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's why he never get one done. He was, yeah. the, he was the, well, definition he done, but, the definition of ADD. He's the definition of a person with ADD. He was constantly on the move. Brilliant man. So now he needs to step up. And the ace is it's a very good ace. Yeah, it sort of helps freeze the checkers on the eight. Whoops. Right, it's a freezing concept. So what do you do here? You make two points or do you hit? Um, you make two points or? Oh, well, first of all, you want to bring the... Uh, I don't think you want to hit here. You don't have a, a blitzing position. And uh, you also don't want to blitz the back man. You want to uh, blitz from the front. Uh, I think you just put all to the eight. And you are clearly right. Wow. Nice play, Toby. God, these players are playing great. The lopsided score is not a result. So, uh, of yeah, the, the reason why they play uh, great because they started the positions. You know, the uh, the position dictates the move. Uh, if you understand the position, the move is a result. They're it's both not playing like under two PR. We don't see that a lot, even at this level of play. Yeah, well, we have to be a little bit honest uh, at least for uh, for the white side it was not so difficult so far i mean he, he rolled a lot of jokers he made points and he rolled doubles so um, yeah yeah mario's had some great rolls i don't know the luck factor but we know who's winning it the, the problem is um, i think it's misleading to uh, look too much on pr and uh, uh, praising one good result you know Interesting. The interesting part should be always to look at every single decision and uh, see what it's worth and uh, and why. Yeah, so four numbers is too much, he thinks, but with the blood in the board, I would give these four numbers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can see the luck factor. Mario's plus five. That's huge in, in a short of matches we've had so far. Yes, we had uh, only huge. a couple of games. And, yeah, uh, plus five. So, um, I actually think uh, that most players would achieve to play a two with these roles. You know? <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. 
But uh, one thing for sure, whenever it's a one, uh, it's played very well. This is the only move. He's up eight pips, so it's like an even race almost. It is an even race. So you never double when your opponent's on the four or five or seven point unless you have a racing lead or unless his board is broken or something unusual is going on. So is he thinking about running? Uh, after the roll, Kengo is up two pips. Yeah. Uh, he has to figure out if he, first of all, he has to figure out the pip count. Second of all, even if he is not running, which he should figure out when is the point where he wants to run. Yeah. So uh, now there's, uh, he has like a one point board, his opponent. Yeah. And he's like uh, two pips, uh, two pips up. Um, so he's not afraid of contact. That's why he's thinking about maybe just staying there and coming down. He could, he could, he could run with both. He could run with one. Uh -huh. Yeah. I didn't see the XG feed, so uh, I'm not sure. But uh, dumping a checker to the two uh, seems like the wrong uh, no. uh, concept. Yeah, yeah. I like his move. I would have actually also considered coming out with both. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wow. Okay, five three, six two, six two, three six. Three six is another good one, but now uh, the race changed a little bit. But still, uh, maybe it's right to run because uh, what is he? What is he really waiting for? I mean, uh -huh. uh, it doesn't get better for him. Yeah. So even though you're down in the race, it still might be exactly, your best game plan. Exactly. 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 Yeah. Because the alternative I mean, uh, really he's risking pointing numbers, and uh, maybe the next time he's not able to run, and uh, I don't see how the position could get better for him. Yeah. And uh, Mario isn't going to be doubling real fast when you're winning seven to nothing, but he's thinking about it. Well, I don't think so. I think he knows the pip count, and uh, you're not doubling this position if you're not up. Well, he's up eight pips. Uh, that's before the roll. Oh, I see. That's before the roll. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. That's a. This is a big roll. This is a big roll, actually. I don't see how you cannot hit. The race is too close. You're winning too much in the race by hitting. Well, hitting makes it volatile and makes it gammonish if you get hit back. Uh, this yeah. is a quieter, softer game. Well, f first of all, you wanna you wanna win uh, you wanna win the game, and uh -huh. you uh, uh, this is a race, you know, and uh, you know you hit uh, you hit from the uh, from the thirteen. Uh, Bring them both down. And just uh, give no, you hitting is the right play. He missed that play. Hitting was the right play. You get a yeah, little too conservative when you're ahead sometimes. Oh, well, uh, I don't know what happened here. Like, uh, for a good player, usually this is a standard move. Maybe he miscounted the race. This yeah. can happen, you know, the um, oh, that's a good the excitement. Point. Uh, he might have thought he was up a little bit more in the race. Yeah, uh, and sometimes also even good players get illusional about the rolls. Maybe he feels he is rolling boxes soon, so he doesn't have to. But uh, <laughs> uh, I, don't, I think good players don't believe that stuff. <laughs> Uh, you would be surprised. Really? <laughs> you would be surprised what I, people all believe. Oh, you know? my God. I think superstition <laughs> brings bad luck. That's my You're opinion. absolutely right about that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's a very good racing number for Kengo and a very poor number for Mario. So yeah. maybe Kengo's got a shot this time. Even well, pip count. Yeah. Um, roll. Oh, double one. Open mouth, and I, I immediately cursed him. Well, terrible roll. Second worst roll in a race. So, uh, at this score, of course, he wants to have as many points as possible. But uh, uh, in a in a race, uh, the cube ownership uh, is very valuable. 
So uh, since uh, he's not terrible fond of the extra point uh, by rolling for two, uh -huh. he, he just wants to sack this game or he wants to win this game. Of course, he likes two points. Uh, he doesn't want to give an a easy cube uh, for Mario. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your point cube is well taken. The biggest cube big you can have is in a race. Exactly. In a race of 60 pips or more, it's worth 18%. Exactly. 18%. And he should cover points, and yeah. he does it. Kengo is a really good player. I like his moves. I like his thinking. He's thinking on the right spots. Yeah. Uh, he seems to be very focused. He seems to be very relaxed. In his yeah. first major tournament. <laughs> yes. Wow. Mochi was saying he did the commentary he with would me be last the, time. He would be actually the fourth Japanese world champion if he can make it. Uh, uh, well, there's a, there's a Kiko the and Mochi, and who's the third? And there was another guy, uh, but uh, oh, Suzuki, uh, Suzuki, uh, Suzuki was the world champion. Uh, Suzuki, yes, Mochi, and Akiko. Uh, Those Mrs. are the name. Three. Yeah, and. Um, yeah, and uh, also Mochi and Akiko uh, both twice. That's right. And Frank Frigo, if he wins tomorrow, will be a second, a two-time world champion also. Almost all the world champions got knocked out in the first round here. There were 12 of them in the tournament. I think there were two left after the first round. Frank and one other, I believe. Yeah, and now there's one left in the final. <laughs> That's right. That's How right. about that, you know? <laughs> what were the odds of that? Frank Frigo is a wonderful story. If you didn't hear it before, he won in 1994. He was on his honeymoon, and they were in France, and they decided they would stop off at Monte Carlo for the fun of it, and he won the tournament. And he's a great player, by the way. Oh, and a great guy. One of my good a friends. Absolutely. Okay, good double, good take. You do need to gamble a little bit with the cube when you're down at this score. Oh, oh, well, this is like a standard formula, and he knows it. You know it. The Keith count. And there's an EPC. Mm -hmm. And there's Thorpe. And there's Kleinman. And there's Matusak. And I don't use any of them very well. <laughs> oh, but counting rolls is probably one of the best. And that's yeah, pretty like, much EPC. Uh, I mean, uh, when you play a lot, you get a, you get a feeling for positions. That's uh, right. You can do a lot with eyeballing when you have a lot of experience. But mostly I'll use yeah. the Keith count in these. That's the easiest... Uh, for me to use. I think everybody should learn the Keith count. It's actually Trice's formula. So I with guess a little Mario bit. has about uh, less than 10% now. Yeah. And it's nice to see the luck factor coming down a little bit and evening out. You don't want to see somebody just run away with the match because he was lucky. Of course, he played very well, too. This is a... Uh, Terrible role, but well, usually in these matches, this is backgammon is all about probabilities, and uh, the probability says that uh, luck doesn't last forever. <laughs> Actually, uh, luck is just a human term. Backgammon knows no luck. Yeah. No, it only knows odds. Exactly, not luck. exactly. That's what exactly. I say. There's no luck in backgammon. By the way, people say there's no luck in chess, and I think they're wrong. Uh, we got a question here in the chat. Uh, yeah. Final starts tomorrow. I think it's 3 p.m. That's correct. 3 p.m. Yeah. Monte Carlo time. I was going to say there is luck in chess, and it's the luck of the draw. <laughs> and the same thing in backgammon. Um, let's say uh, there are more factors than the pure performer's strength in every sport. Yeah, mm -hmm. in every sport are sure. additional factors. Yeah. Absolutely, and it's uh, just the same for backgammon. Makes okay, no difference. Okay, we need double fives or double sixes, or yeah, that's the game. It's smart to throw it away when you roll a one. <laughs> okay, that's the game, ball game. We have a little bit more competitive match now, which is very important for you and me, because they should be playing for us to have more fun. Well, uh, we are we are here to comment on uh, on their moves, so uh, <laughs> let's not care about how, how, we'll how long more, it takes. Or we'll have more moves to comment on if they play longer. <laughs> yeah. if the match goes longer. I'm getting paid by the move. I don't know about you. <laughs> I'm not paying got, you anything. I get free water. <laughs> free water. <laughs> I get free water. You know what? In Monte Carlo, that's a pretty good deal. <laughs> <laughs> I made a mistake at the dinner the other night. They said, do you want flat water or, or sparkling? I said, flat. And they brought me this huge bottle for $16. So I now thought I was going to get a glass of water. Mm -hmm. So water isn't really free, Monte Carlo, at the finer restaurants. All right, five point. Exactly. 
Exactly. Also, uh, this is another uh, move uh, which doesn't le leave you so much room actually uh, for uh, decisions. Yeah. Now you have a decision. Uh, anchor yeah. and hit. Anchor and hit. I don't see. I don't see how you can't anchor I, and hit. I agree with you. It just looks so. I natural. agree with you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but certainly, it was more of a decision than four-one. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> This is like uh, 16 uh, reshots, or oh, even more, 17. So almost half the field uh, hits here, and he rolls one of them, double fours. Yes, um, you want to consider when you see suddenly, you know, the, the force is not so good, you consider the other threes, uh, but uh, again, there's not much room here. There's not much room for considerations. Yeah. But it never hurts to look over. Yeah. I, I, I uh, think you're hitting out in the outfield, aren't you? Otherwise, you're giving your opponent his full roll. I agree with you. I agree with you. It's sure. only a two point board. Yeah. It's only a two point board. It's too early. Yeah. yeah. Early, right, I assume. They sound checkers no good. They should change that rule. The U.S. has been using it successfully for quite a while now. Okay, this is kind of what we call it. Well, he could make the 20 point. But it's, it, it's not he bad. He could, he could. It's, it's uh, uh, once again, you're right. No, it's not necessarily. The, uh, 24, 21. So see, the, uh, the the first thing is not following your instincts, but look at the position. You know, what does uh, what does help your position most, yeah? And he's up before the roll, he will be up after the roll, so uh, it could be also the uh, the outfield point. It was which the outfield gives point. Him more, um, I would have missed that. It's not natural for me to make that outfield point, it's natural for me to make the, the golden point. And I think maybe you're missing the things because you you judge too fast. Yeah. I'm half fast. Yeah. The first thing always should be to look at uh -huh. the position. Yeah. I, I did look at it and I would have gotten it wrong. You also tempt me uh, to talk faster, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm better when I think more, you know. Well, when, when Toby was in Chicago, we spent a lot of time together. He learned to talk much faster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and play faster. And scream louder. <laughs> yeah. I didn't scream much in Chicago. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I double, I double. Is there anything like that Chicago Chouette? Was there anything in the world as no, wild? No, it was, it was fantastic. Fun? It was fantastic. It's amazing. Yeah. I miss that. I miss the guys. Yeah. And uh, shout out to Carter. He's been ill lately. I hope yeah, he's doing better. Yeah, and came to Ralph. Uh, we, we wish Ralph. them to get well, right? Yes. And uh, hopefully they can hear us. Uh, right. And the rest of the guys in the Chouette were always sick in different ways. <laughs> Bob Z and Herb, they're still around playing well. So, Bob Z won't fly, otherwise we would be seeing him win some tournaments, too. Oh, there's a hitting play. It seems natural. And he does it. And if he... Oh, uh, dance. that was too bad. If he would hit back, it was just an open game, but now it's a huge advantage for Mario. And of course he covers, covers and uh, I don't know about the two. If you cover with the one, then you bring the two up, or do you cover with the two in safety? Okay, I wasn't sure which one you do. I would also be not sure. I could. Uh... Are we looking at a possible cube? I don't think at this score you are. Uh, well, why not? I mean, he has to fight for the points. There's a long way to go. He needs uh, six more points. Oh, uh, he can win games. I mean, uh, I think this is actually a good double. Yeah. yeah at this score, I mean, I'm going to grab that cube and take it real quick. Well, he's controlling. He's controlling the outfield, which is very often key in these positions. Yeah. 
and uh, he has a strong board. Kengo has no real counterplay. He has neither an anchor nor he has a board. The only thing he he really made was is a bar. Yeah, this is basically the only mo uh, constructive move was a six-one. Uh -huh. While on the other hand, uh, Mario did uh, the five-point and uh, uh, the four-point and has the advanced anchor and is controlling the outfields. So it's a very good cube, is what you're saying, even at 7-2. to two. It's a strong controlling position with gammons involved. How can and it be a uh, cube when it's a pass? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Not even a take. Very good call, Tobias. That's why you're sitting here. I needed somebody with brains next to me. Yeah. I might have missed this cube, and it's not even a take. Position, but, uh, race, and threats. He's got all three. Yeah, and the, uh, the, the good thing is always not uh, uh, following your uh, first intuition, but uh, look at the position and uh, figure the position out, you know? Yeah. So you have to be methodical in these situations. Exactly, yeah. And uh, it's about positional aspects. Yeah. So, he might take it, and I wouldn't call it a blunder at all. It's not a blunder anyway. It's only 4%. It wouldn't be a horrible take. At this score, you got to be tempted to gamble. Well, what he sees is uh, that the opponent has three men back, but they are just placed very strongly. Yeah, and then he has to uh, he has to see he has no point, no additional point made in his board he under took deep it. blood. He took it. I I don't fault him for taking this cube at this score. Absolutely not. It's a consideration. You know, yeah. it's a weighing process. He has to weigh uh, uh, the score. He has to weigh. Uh, uh, the race, which is pretty close, he's weighing that his opponent has three uh, checkers back, which is uh, also good for him. Yeah, but then he has also to see, you know, that uh, the other position is so much stronger, and he's on the bar. Mario is going to blitz if he can. I would hit here because he's got a stronger and board, and he doesn't and want of, the, the, of course, and the blot uh, uh, in the in the opponent's board. Yes. Yeah, this is Clearly how to advance position. your position. This is how to advance your position. A three is very a double three. And this is wonderful, wonderful, extremely role. strong. And now thinking is necessary. He can't cover this blot. He needs infield points. He doesn't want to uh, spread more blots. So this is a difficult task. You know, he doesn't want to play with too many blots. That's but he also needs infield points. I mean. Uh, but 13 10, is, three is right by a mile because of what you said. Yes. You don't want to create more blots right exactly. now. Exactly. Very good after analysis. The, after the consideration. Very good analysis. A lot of people would make the inside point and gamble more too much. You have too many blots around the board. This is a big miss. This is a huge miss. Big miss because huge now miss. this is a swing. There's a six to now hit he's, a lot uh, of covers. Right, and he's leading in the race, so um Wow. He needs he needs safety now. Well, he's got it. He can anchor. If if and you cover. need right, if you need safety, the play is almost given. I mean, if you uh, if you just want to have safety, the play is given, right? You're right. Nothing comes close to that play. Yeah. yeah. You so this it, is Toby. how to look at the uh, the position. You Toby, know, why uh, aren't you it? sitting there? You're getting everything right. Why are you sitting here? Um, <laughs> You're getting everything right. Oh, well, uh, I'm not getting everything right, <laughs> but... Um, yes, you are. Well, but Mochi was sitting here last time, so if he could sit here, so could you. <laughs> All right, <laughs> why not? Why not? <laughs> and he got pretty much everything right, too. Actually, he missed a few and was surprised. Even the best player in the world has... So now this is interesting. Yes. Maybe now is the point for leaving the anchor. Well... You could cover with the three and leave the anchor. Was at least a consideration. Uh huh. Okay. Four six would be a monster. They stop for the transcriber, right. if you're wondering. Yeah. So, uh,. I actually like to see. Uh, uh, for me, the the last decision was too uh, too fast. Um, uh -huh. I know it's. Uh, I mean, it's good not leaving any shots and uh, making an infield point. But um, because you of don't the race, have you would have thought you about running. Huh? You don't have much time, uh -huh. you know, to to leave the anchor. Uh huh.
This is an easy play. Forced by logic. Okay, double fours and double sixes. Oh, four five. Again, your idea of leaving the anchor might work. He's up 18 pips before the roll. Is he going to have a better opportunity later? This is not easy for me. Um, oh well, uh, there's not so many pointing numbers. And uh, also, if you're not going now, your opponent uh, will bring another checker in the outfield. So you would have run? I, I think see, I would have I, uh, I'm strongly tempted. I'm strongly tempted. Um, Love to see XG on this one. Also, yeah, you don't really have the stronger uh, stronger board when it comes to hitting, but uh, you have the same strengths of your board. Um, well, in the this cube, is a difficult decision. Yeah, very you know, hard, very it's hard. not like uh, it's not black and white. You know, this is uh, it's a big consideration, and uh, it's also what happens after after your decision. Yeah, is uh, is crucial. Yeah, but uh, you're running. You. You are running, running out of time. Right. You're running, running out of time if you uh, yep. uh, if you get stuck. He brings out another another guy in the outfield, um, and uh, you're getting more and more in trouble. Running is the correct play. Very well. You nailed it again. You're much smarter than you look, Toby. That's not too hard. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and what your prediction came true? He's just going to come out. He might stay there as a catcher and come into the... Yes, definitely. Oh, no, no he's not. He's not because it's he's... It's close. 0 0.011. Yeah, and I see I see the merit is because he can still make the bar point uh, like this. Yeah. If he... Uh, the bar point is still a valuable point. We yeah. have a very bad roll here now for Kengo. He has to leave a shot. And also the swing on the 6-5. Uh, it's a huge difference. Uh, it's a huge swing on 6-5 if he, if he stays back. At um, at the fourteen, yep, six five buries you. Yeah, and on the other hand, it's not a good roll at all for. Uh, uh, well, he gets away with it for black. He gets away with it. Holding a two cube here means it's a very very powerful recube if Kengo can ever get to a positive position. Wow, this is good. Now is the point. It's only threes and ones. You come out with both? Sure. It's only threes and ones. Only threes and ones. Yeah. But what else are you going to do? You're going to leave shots anyway and be stuck? Yeah, I mean, you're you, have, uh, you survive 16 times and uh, you're like 30 pips up. Yeah. 28, uh, exactly. Yeah, if you yeah. don't get hit, you might yeah. even have a recube soon, if not the next roll. No, you wouldn't probably on the oh, next. Well, you, you you're right. Soon. You too many blots, but uh, you hang in for the right moment. This yep. is a uh, that's a very comfortable position, you know. Once you not get hit, and if you get hit, uh, there's life after death, you know. It's yeah. not it's not like gin. The opponent hasn't a close board. It's just a three point board. It's ones, threes, yeah. and six five. But. Uh, the longer no. you wait, the worse it gets. But no, this is very hard, you know. The fear no. of being pointed on, the, the fear of uh, sacking three blots. Yeah. yeah, that was a very poor play. This is, uh, I mean, you have to understand the sequence has a serious consequence for Kengo. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> he could uh, he could actually lose the whole match on going out with both. There are BGs, there are not so many, but uh, there's like, uh, if he goes out, probably there's one or two percent, or at maybe there's one percent, or... Yeah, but if there ever is a time to gamble, it's when you're losing seven to two and holding the cube. Exactly, but you have to understand his position, you know, we are not losing anything by talking, you know, <laughs> we are not losing anything... <laughs> there's uh, no emotion in it for uh, us. Exactly, sir. yeah. This guy's in his first major tournament. Two, two matches away from the world champion. He is doing a hell of a job, we yes. have to Look say. How well he's uh, playing. A hell of a job. I mean, uh, uh, he is calm, he is focused. Yeah. And maybe it even helps him that uh, uh, he it's his first tournament because uh, not many people uh, know him, not many people talk to him. He gets less destruction. You really need to be focused. You know, uh -huh. mental strength is one of the key uh, uh, the, uh, the the key performance qualities in mm -hmm. uh, in backgammon. Yeah. 
Uh, Very good play. Very good play. Yeah. It was a big play and it was right. And it was right uh, since uh, like uh, four or five <laughs> rows. Yeah. <laughs> but now he has been running it. before. Yeah. 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 All right. Two out. No. Uh, flooding the outfield and giving these shots. Uh, flooding the outfield is right. Oh, that was a very, very poor play by uncharacteristically poor play by Mario. Well, this is two out was right. Uh, uncharacteristically, this was a. Uh, I mean, he didn't, as we pointed out, he didn't had so many decisions. You know, he was yeah. playing holding games. He was playing blitzes. Uh, he had smooth numbers. That was a real decision. Yeah, and he, and uh, he blew it. He sadly, blew it. Yep. Um, sadly, he missed it. But we also have to say, uh, this guy is playing for a week. Yeah, so uh, probably he had like uh, 700 decisions a day. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, he won the since he, uh, he won the high roller uh, tournament since too. seven days, yeah. right? He played like uh, uh, three or four tournaments here: the super jackpot, the high roller, uh, the tournament, and uh, the pre-tournament. Uh, yeah, but you got seven hours between matches. <laughs> you know, that's one thing about Monte Carlo. Uh, yeah, you got time to rest. Yeah, but time to rest doesn't necess doesn't necessarily give you the freshness you need. Uh -huh. You know. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think this plays itself. Yeah, this it is a very, very good turn of events. And, and now it's uh, you should, if you you should at least think because you have to think. You know, when do you want to turn the cube? Even if you don't want to turn it now, you should be aware when you want to do it, just to make sure you're not missing it. Yeah, because now right. you know you have the upper hand. You need a strategy to know about your cube handling. Yeah. Well, you have 17 pips. Uh, you have so much in the right. Race. Wow, yeah, yeah. 24 pips. Mario oh. has to come out. He Mario's needs not coming out. It was very, very costly. Uh, yeah, now he has to come out because there's a blot on the ace, and uh, he needs contact. He needs more contact than he has now. Yeah. Uh, but in fact, whatever he does, it doesn't pass. matter so much if his opponent is doubling. If his opponent is not doubling, yeah, it actually matters a lot. Yeah, this play is better. So, uh, so very often you say it doesn't matter what the opponent says, but it's because you're saying it's always a double pass, but you never know if you got doubled out. Well, you make the play that you hope he won't double with. <laughs> that's that's what you're looking to do. Well, this this play would be an illegal move, I guess. <laughs> if, if you want to make a play, your opponent is not doubling. <laughs> <laughs> you have to make an illegal move. <laughs> no, he moved five. Yeah. Yeah, five is... Two, uh, that's it. He hadn't finished. That's a... Atta, it's atta a, boy. It's that's a good a move, cube. but... Great cube. It's a pass. So, uh, how to figure it out? First of all, it's a race. Yeah. Then, of course, he's looking what his opponent's bad numbers are. Yeah. And... Um, Six two. Every six, every six is a bad number. Yeah. Double six. Six, six is Double not. Six no, is not a six bad six number. Is not, yeah. but he has like most sixes are bad. Uh, ten. Uh, uh, then it's uh, five four is uh, is a bad number. Not too So many these bad are numbers. the immediate right. These yeah. are the immediate shots. Yeah. Oh. Oh. And you see this? Whoa. Yeah. It's so not the, like we. Oh, see but he gets rewarded with one of the bad numbers. Wow. Yeah. That was a bad take. Wow. He needs ones and eights. Oh, he got the one. The luck has been with Mario this game. This match. He took a bad cube, made a bad play, and he's winning. That's back, Evan. It happens. Yeah, well, uh, what we... He made, first of all, he made a good move to step out to the outfield. Uh, then we didn't know how big was the pass. Yeah, we just saw it's a pass. But uh, maybe it uh, it was not... Uh, I guess it was bad because he has his, uh, his big lead and uh, he yeah. can lose Gammons and he's so much down in the race. But I suspect it was a blunder to yeah. take that cube. Yeah, I think you're right here. Yeah. yeah, but... But most players, a four cube when you're winning seven to two, they're going to drop without thinking. And the game is not over. No. The game is Kango is still up in this race. And uh, if he gets out, especially with a four or a five, he's in pretty good shape here. 
Mario has no way of hitting him. This game is not over, you're right. It's a huge he wants He wants to uh, maximize uh, uh, contact without hurting himself. Yeah, So he doesn't want to give direct shots, of course. Uh -huh. He wants to cover the field. So uh, this is a 12 away. All right, here's a so he roll. wants to stay exactly where he is. A oh, oh, double six. Well, it's a double shot. Oh, my God. No, it's not a double shot. No, it, uh, it's a three times. It's, big, only, a, big it's only a shot. Yeah. Wow, what a roll. Oh, he got a 1-5. Wow. Wow. Huge swings Oh, here. my Huge God. Huge swings. And you see this, these things uh, uh, does something uh, with you, you know. Begemen is uh, about probabilities, as we said, but... Uh, oh, and double one. He needs to roll a six or a four to stop, not, or he's cracking. So the good news for Kengo, he can't lose a Gammon, but... Uh, the oh, oh and there's a crack. more good news. There's more good crack. news. Mario didn't double, and it would have been an interesting recube to eight. <laughs> it really would have been very interesting. I would love to take a look at that recube possibility. Yeah, there. probably, uh, probably not because winning four points brings him two away. Yeah. So, uh, he, d he really doesn't like the over points. Yeah. I think it was a good decision not to double. Yeah, I, yeah. I would think Great it, decision not to double. I would but, think he uh, would take the cube if he yeah. was doubled. He's out. He's out. Better have a six Kango very quickly. Is still alive. If he rolls a six now. No. Nope. The wrong six. No redouble take. 10%. And it's still... And it's because of the over points. Right. Uh, it's still a take at ten percent winning chances. Wow! So, uh, so his take point has to be right. lower than ten percent, like more like six percent. Because it could end in a, uh, it could be DMP, you yeah. know, a sixteen. Yeah. Whenever he takes the eight, it would be automatically a sixteen. Yeah. That means his take point is under ten percent. That's all it means. It's easily going to be maybe six percent. Yeah, if he wins, it's uh, like two away, uh, eleven away. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to gamble with a recube. So. Um, at some point, though, it might be a re now it's a redouble pass. Yeah. How many people are going to know that? You don't see much well, chance at all here to win, so I can understand a redouble here. One thing to mention uh, that he's uh, he's thinking at the right spots here. Yeah. And this is one of his approaches. I think this is one of Mario's major strengths: is uh, the cube handling, like uh, the. Uh, um, um uh, the uh, uh the 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 bookkeeping of the game uh -huh. you know how to uh, uh these uh when is a cube efficient uh, uh doubling points this is things uh he's trained to this is uh, I've been this told is he's a great one mathematician of his, this is one of his approaches uh, uh -huh. of thinking this is one one of his core strengths so uh you can't fault him for rolling, even though it says it's a double. It's only like 3% yeah, wrong. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, being 3% wrong, how to figure out this, you know? This, that's, uh, it's in the window, you know? Now he, I'm pretty sure... Look, it's still only 2.4, because no matter what he does, unless he rolls a 6.5, he's, he's pretty much gin anyway. He's winning ninety six points. Yes, he's not uh, right. He's not. Uh, he's not losing. I by, wouldn't risk uh, the six uh, five uh, myself. I'm telling you. There he goes. Yeah. I like this. It's a big pass, but I wouldn't fault somebody for gambling here. And you see, uh, it, uh, I have a lot of sympathy for Kango. He had a smile on his face when he was getting it. You know, uh, uh, like. <laughs> he, it was a. Uh, uh, he was waiting for this decision uh -huh. to have and. Uh, I don't know if I'm smiling when I'm getting cubed to eight no, for the world but championship. <laughs> it's also a little bit, uh, uh, yeah, a relief probably that uh, he can he can end either the match or this game. Yeah, yeah you don't want to this continue this game for. Here, I see the, what you're saying. Yeah, you want to get out of this game. Yeah, it's either like being this, in a car either wreck. this nasty game is over, yeah. or he has a chance to uh, to roll for the match. So uh, yeah. maybe this is why he's smiling. I uh, actually like the way he's handled it. You know, some people. He's not looking bitter at all. He he enjoys. Uh, he has a complex decision which he can, is able to figure out. You know. 
I think he shows a wonderful attitude. Yeah. Okay, over the board, could you figure out that you have 3% winning chances here? Is it, there, there is some method to that. There is a mathematical approach. I would have difficulty. I know, I, I know I'm screwed, but I don't know by how much. <laughs> so what you can think about it, uh, just think uh, Mario had a close board, you know? Uh -huh. What would be your winning percentage there? This is uh, very similar. 3%, now, 3 yeah, now yeah, now he just opened his board. Yeah. Uh, uh, so um, with a great distribution and you have a pure distribution, so you add a little bit, you know, and you... Uh, Good uh, point. So you start with the reference position. And you minus you know, the, and you exactly the uh, reference position you're looking for is like the close board with a checker on the bar, and then you see uh, Black's position is uh, not really thrilling because uh, he has stacks and he has gaps, and uh, then you see White's board is open. So you could figure it out that it's around three percent. Yeah. And, and uh, he, he took it. Oh, he took oh the my cube. God. Oh my this god. This could be the most exciting win in the history of backgammon if he wins. Do you recube now or do you wait? <laughs> That's the question. Do you do you fool around and re recube next roll? It's not, it's not really fooling around. There's well nothing double. wrong in waiting, you know. Uh, I mean, uh, you roll double six and no. oh, of course you could do it also. Okay. Just to get it out it's, of the way. Uh, it's it's never a mistake. I always Yeah, uh, he rolled a six. There's hope. There's he's alive. Uh, for myself, I would keep on to the cube and uh, let my opponent feel bad, you know, uh -huh. when I'm... Uh, yeah, me too. I do that too. Uh, right? Just to tease him a little. Okay, there's there's game here. There's hope. It's not a lot of hope, but it's some hope. That six was big. Well, to mention that Kengo already has a checker off. He's not starting from scratch. One yeah. checker's off. Yeah. That's big. One checker off is as good as two when you have 15 checkers. To start with. Uh, yeah, but Mario has five off and he has no gaps. Yeah. It's uh it's it, it's and he's on roll. It would be the most historic turnaround in the history of the world championship. That I don't know. <laughs> many, there may be another one, but <laughs> there are many bed swings happen. It, it would hardly I remember uh, uh I remember uh, Oh double four. Oh wow He's in the game. And the Japanese crowd is getting excited. He's here. in the game. <laughs> Wow, one or two more big dollars. Oh, come on. This is exciting. How exciting is this? Oh, I saw the six first. Saw the six first. He still got a chance. He still has a chance. We've seen bigger upsets than this. He must roll doubles now. Yeah, there's also a, 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 two -one. a possible 2 1. Yeah. yeah. 6 3. He needs a 2 1. He needs a 2 1 now, yeah. Well, he doesn't need it, but uh, that's it, game. That's it's match. over. Yeah, great match, great win. Yeah, Mario wins the high roller and now gets to play for the world championship tomorrow. Yeah, at three o'clock against Frank Frigo, who is trying to repeat. And Mario, look at this. They they played very well. Mario played at three. You can't fault him for that last take. That was exciting. Yeah. He almost turned it around. Right. Almost I, made it. I think Kengu played a great game, and I also think he had uh, the tougher side to play. Yeah. yeah, and the luck factor was plus four. That's a pretty strong luck factor for Mario. These two guys, what a battle. What a great, great finish. Yeah. And uh, tomorrow is going to be very exciting. I think we're going to have some streaming before 3 o'clock. Uh, watch, uh, watch my Facebook page. Watch the website. We'll announce it. I'm not sure what else we'll stream because we've got a lot of really other great matches going on besides the championship. we still got the Super Jackpot with a lot of great players in there. Doubles. I don't think doubles is done yet. And uh, seniors, some really good side events. And... Uh, we will be back tomorrow, and Toby, I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to work with you and just to be with you. Toby invited me to come to Berlin. I'm going to stay there for about three years and visit with him, <laughs> and because uh, just to learn from him. And we have so much fun together. But uh, thank you again for joining me. Your comments were right on. And thank you, Phil. It was a pleasure. Thank it's always you. a pleasure. I'm Good night, everybody. Get, I want to see if we get. Don't go away. I'm going to see if we can get Mario over here for some comments. In fact, why don't you do that? Can you help me get Mario? Here he comes. Grab them. It's right there. You don't want to? Okay, I'll do it.
I did an interview earlier with Mario. Now he wants to just relax, uh, and I don't blame him. His heart's racing. Uh, last time he told me his heartbeat was like 130, and he still did the interview with me. Uh, he's a real gentleman. We look forward to uh, the match tomorrow, 3 o'clock. It's really, really big for the World Championship. Uh, what a story. M Mario Kuhl from Germany winning the high roller, and now he's in the finals of the World Championship, and he's one match away from the World Championship. He doesn't have to win twice. He only has to win once. They've changed the format in the last couple of years, and I love it. So we have a more exciting finals tomorrow. Stay tuned. And uh, again, we'll announce if there's some other matches before 3 o'clock. We may have a super jackpot or two and some other, maybe the doubles finals. So uh, we'll let you know. I don't have the exact schedule for streaming. Uh, thank you for watching. Hit the like button if you're, if you're watching. And uh, come to Monte Carlo. Stop watching. Get here. If, if you ever make it to one back Edmund tournament in your life, this is the one. I've been here a few times, and there's nothing like the excitement here. And, of course, Monte Carlo itself is great. Saturday night. It's Saturday night in Monte Carlo. They have a fireworks show and a contest between countries. That's just amazing. I'm going to run outside and look at it and see if it's still going on. Good night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching.